हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द क्लास ऑफ टी वाई बी एस सी माइक्रोबायोलॉजी फॉर द सब्जेक्ट एनजाइमोलॉजी दैट इज पेपर थ्री फॉर सेमेस्टर वन आर टूडेज चैप्टर इज प्रिंसिपल एंड मेथड ऑफ एनजाइम प्योरिफिकेशन एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो आई बी मेनली टॉकिंग अबाउट मेथड्स ऑफ सेल्फ फ्रैक्शनेशन In this video I have included a general introduction for different methods of cell fractionation history of cell fractionation which types of homogenizers used for bringing about cell disruptions of tissues and cells as well as a general summary of cell fractionation process so as we all know that cells are the structural and functional units of life cells contain various organelles which perform a variety of specific functions to perform these functions they require many specific enzymes as we discussed in the previous video that most of the micro microbial enzymes are extracellular in nature hence require no disruption of the cells they are generally secreted in the fermentation medium this is known as the crude extract and this crude extract can be directly subjected to centrifugation or filtration to separate the biomass and the enzymes intercellular enzymes in this type of enzymes cell disruption is an essential process as various enzymes are localized in the specific organelles where they are required to bring about catalysis one can define fractionation as a separation process in which a certain quantity of mixture is divided during phase transition into a number of smaller quantities or fractions in which the composition varies according to a gradient let us try to understand this process with the help of plant cells for example when you isolate plant cells and want to recover enzymes which are involved in photosynthesis we will need to first break the cell and then divide the lysate obtained into smaller fractions these fractions can then be subjected to centrifugation for example the different organelles of the plant cells will have different densities and in density gradient centrifugation will occupy different layers we can isolate the layer which contains the plastids which contain the enzymes for photosynthesis hence we separate out that layer and subject it to further purification steps history of cell fractionation Albert Claude was a scientist who who developed the technique of cell fractionation he mainly used this to identify different organelles using centrifugation he received nobel prize for the same in 1974 cell fractionation mainly involves two steps first being homogenization of the tissues and cells and the second being separation of enzymes so let us see the first step that is homogenization of cells and tissues homogenization literally means to break something open so 
homogenization is mainly concerned with rupturing the so principal aim is to achieve highest degree of cell breakage but at the same time care should be taken to use minimum disruptive forces without damaging any organelle of interest it is especially helpful if we know the exact location of the enzyme before we proceed with isolation of that enzyme if we also know whether the enzyme is present in free or bound form inside a specific membrane bound organelle certain procedures which will try to disrupt the activity of enzyme can be avoided during the process of fractionation one has to take care that enzyme molecule which is obtained do not lose their biological activity enzymes are mainly active either in their tertiary or quaternary structure so it is very important for the enzyme to retain this structure even after the process of fractionation and enzyme purification an ideal fractionation procedure would be the one which is able to maintain both the activity as well as structure of the enzyme so during the entire and purification process care must be taken to avoid procedures which result in loss of enzymatic activity it is utmost important to control the steps and protect the enzyme's activity during the process of fractionation buffers are used to maintain a constant ph this ph will vary depending upon the enzyme or protein to be isolated ph is chosen in the range where the protein is most stable the molarity of the buffer is also of equal importance extraction should be mainly carried out at a ph value far from the isoelectric ph of the enzyme as they are least soluble at their isoelectric points use of appropriate temperature that is around 4 degree celsius bring about enzyme purification is a common practice rapid change in temperature during purification procedure may lead to loss of enzymatic activity due to denaturation of enzymes this can be avoided by keeping or maintaining a constant temperature presence of endogenous proteases can also bring about lysis of the enzyme present in the medium to avoid this one can use protease inhibitors which will prevent the enzyme from proteolytic cleavage activity some of the very commonly used protease inhibitors include pmsf that is phenylmethyl sulfonyl fluoride edta e64 anti pain etc many enzymes may have the amino acid cysteine in their active sites cysteine residues have thiol groups and they may be damaged during the extraction procedure hence during the extraction procedure exposure to oxygen should be avoided exposure to oxygen can cause oxidation of the thiol group which is present in the reduced state inside the cell to avoid this 2 mercapto ethanol is added to the medium so that reducing conditions can be maintained in that particular 
solvent for removal of heavy metal impurities many chelating agents like edta must be used but the use of edta should be optimized as chelating agents not only remove heavy metals but if the concentration of these chelating agents is in is in excess they can remove the important ions which are necessary for enzymatic reaction one production of free radicals due to lysis of water may damage the proteins or enzyme enzyme molecules and other free radical scavengers are incorporated into the medium hence the choice of a specific method and the set of precautions for each and every enzyme will vary there are many recent developments in enzymology methods are continuously developed for extraction of enzymes methods of homogenization homogenizers fall into two categories on the basis of number of times the disruptive force is applied to bring about cell disruption type 1 homogenizers in this type the cells are subjected to disruptive force only once a good example for this is the use of the french press the french press is mainly used in the laboratory for homogenization of microorganisms who have a particularly tough outer cell wall type 2 homogenizers in this case the cells are repeatedly or continuously exposed to disruptive forces liquid shear mechanical shear sonication and osmotic lysis are some types of forces which can be used to bring about cell disruption many other abrasives can also be used now let us see in detail the various cell disruption methods mechanical as well as non mechanical forces can be used to bring about disruption of cells when we talk about mechanical forces solid shear can be used to bring about homogenization use of electric homogenizers mortal pestle simple blenders abrasives like bead mill are included in this category one can also use liquid shearing forces to bring about disruption of cells use of ultrasonicators or french press is included under this category non mechanical forces can be divided into physical chemical or use of enzymes for bringing about cell disruption the physical methods include subjecting the cells to an osmotic shock or thermolysis in chemicals one can use detergents to bring about cell disruption one can also use antibiotics to bring about cell disruption enzymatic methods uses lytic enzymes to rupture the cell membrane now let us see one by one each example in detail so the first is use of mechanical forces to bring about cell disruption use of bead mills in many cases uh, a simple blender can be operated in about cell disruption mainly done for plant and animal cells 
use of mortar pistol can also suffice the need in certain cases one can also use fine abrasives like glass pieces and buffer to obtain a homogeneity but the most commonly used is a dynamo mill or a bead mill so a bead mill mainly consists of a chamber in this chamber there is a rotating shaft positioned in the center to this shaft agitators are fitted these agitators are known to provide kinetic energy to the small beads which are present in the chamber the beads can be made of either glass or ceramic with a diameter ranging up to 5 micrometer they are used to break open the cells the choice of bead size and the weight is greatly dependent on what type of cells are you using so disruption takes place due to the grinding action of the rolling beads and the impact resulting from the cascading ones bead mills due to this generate enormous amounts of heat hence a number of cryogenic agents are used liquid nitrogen or glycol unit is added to bring about cooling the main application of using a bead mill is to bring about disruption of either yeast animal or plant tissue cells bead mill can be operated on a small scale of as small as few kilograms of yeast per hour to large scales to obtain lysis of hundreds of kilograms per hour in this diagram you can see the rolling beads when move bring about the rupture of cells ultrasonication uses liquid shearing methods ultrasonic homogenizers mainly work by inducing vibrations with the help of a titanium probe this probe is immersed in the cell suspension due to the vibrations induced by the titanium probes a process called as cavitation occurs in cavitations many tiny bubbles are formed and they explode producing a local shock wave and disrupting the cell wall due to high pressure changes alternatively high frequency ultrasonic waves can be used to generate a transient pressure alternatively high frequency ultrasonic waves can be used for cell disruption due to the ultrasonic oscillators a transient pressure is generated alongside a lot of heat is generated when cell disruption is being carried out usually 20 hertz for 30 to 60 seconds in presence of ice can create enough shearing force to disturb the cell architecture this method is mainly used to bring about lysis of the plant and fungal cells one can use ultrasonication in con- combination with different chemical methods we move on to the use of french press the primary mechanism of french press is to use a high shearing rate within the orifice french press is most commonly used instrument for bringing about lysis of bacterial cell so as you can see in the diagram the french press has a stainless steel chamber as shown in black color which opens into the outside with the help of a small needle valve the suspension of cells as shown in green color is placed in the chamber with the needle valve or orifice being in the closed position 
the chamber is inverted and the valve is opened after this the piston is pushed so as to force out any air in the medium hydraulic press is used to generate a solid support as well as create a pressure difference once the pressure that is required is achieved the needle valve is opened fractionally to release the pressure and the cells expand and burst the valve is kept open while the pressure is maintained so that a trickle of smashed cells can be obtained secondary mechanisms involve the process of impingement the operating pressure of a french press is in the range of 10000 to 50000 psi applications small scale recovery of intracellular proteins and dna from bacterial and plant cells thermolysis it is one of the most common methods used in large scale industries to release enzymes or proteins from the cells cells are exposed to a high temperature for short durations of time this is followed by due to a lower temperature in presence of buffer mainly periplasmic proteins in gram negative bacteria are released when the cells are heated up to 50 degrees celsius cytoplasmic proteins from e coli are removed within 10 minutes at 90 degrees celsius use of osmotic shock osmotic shock is mainly used to disrupt animal cells this is done by changing the solute concentration of the liquid surrounding the cells by the process of osmosis water can be moved either inside or outside the cell causing its volume to decrease or increase to a point which results in the bursting of the cells this method cannot be used for plants and should be used only when working with animal cells or protozoa as they do not have a cell wall protecting them cells are immersed in a buffer with high percentage of sucrose for about 30 minutes to 1 hour in this hypotonic solution the cells lose water and shrink they are plasmolyzed and now suddenly transferred to a buffer of very low osmotic pressure or in distilled water this causes endosmosis causing the cells to swell and burst open use of chemical solvents for degradation of the plant cell wall which are very tough one needs to use chemical solvents so that one can extract the enzymes inside the plant cell many organic solvents such as toluene ether benzene methanol surfactants and phenyl ethyl alcohol dmso can be used to permeate the plant cell wall edta is used specifically to disrupt the cell wall of gram negative bacteria these bacteria cell wall contain lipopolysaccharides which are stabilized by cations such as magnesium and calcium edta will chelate these cations leaving pores or holes in the cell wall this method can be used with a wide range of organism the problem that can arise is that due to the action of edta certain proteins can get denatured use of detergents so detergents are known to damage the integral membrane proteins present in the cell wall or the cell membrane its main mechanism is to solubilize these membrane proteins detergents can either be ionic which can be either cationic or anionic or non anionic in nature 
the most commonly used anionic detergents are sds twin at polysorbate also recognize the cell membrane proteins and bring about disruption of the protein protein or the lipid protein interactions one can also use catatopic agents such as urea and gonadine to bring about lysis of cells detergents mainly work by decreasing the cell surface tension and causing lysis of the cell membrane using enzymes enzymes degrade the cell wall components of the membrane to release intercellular organelles or compounds enzymes that are commonly used for degradation of cell wall of plants yeast and fungi include various types of cellulases pectinases chitinases and lysozymes these enzymes due to their high price and limited availability limit the utilization on large scale processes these are the references thank you